So welcome back. Today's video is going to be a part two of last week's video. So if you are new, brand new, and you haven't seen any of my videos, it's pretty important to watch the first part so you understand how I'm coming into the second one today. Um, but I, feel, I still think they're individual stories, not that you, if you only really had stomach for watching one, you totally could and you could get it too. So thank you for um, finding this video or thank you for arriving here as you do every week. I make videos every Friday and I tell you kind of my thought process on how to refine my life in terms of trying to achieve the things that I want to achieve or to just understand myself more and this is kind of like a story of how I'm doing that part the second part so I hope you enjoy I like to play this game because I'm good at this game it's because I hmm it's very complicated as most things are as you can probably imagine what people like from other people is I think dependent upon how you grew up how you formed your first love, how healthy or not healthy that was, how healthy your attachment to yourself and to others were, and how, uh, how self-aware you are. Um, but mostly I do think that like, you don't choose how you form your sexuality. You don't choose how you're attracted to someone. You don't choose that but you can understand it you can probably even try to tweak it and change it but i don't think you choose maybe i'm very wrong i don't think i chose the game that i'm good at i don't think that i chose that i think it happened i think it happened and here's the thing when i was younger i only had one boyfriend and that boyfriend lasted for like 10 years all of my i met him when i was in sixth grade and we stopped dating when i was in my early 30s so all my formative years of understanding myself as a woman understanding like first a child and then kind of a teenager and then a woman um i went through all that with the same type of person and i went off oh, he didn't really change that much honestly he was always kind of like the same person. And so I like I only really got good at his type of personality. And I only really got good at like I had a magnetic draw to him since I met him. Literally the day that I met him. And that could be because I was already primed to liking that type of personality from like the childhood that I had. And I didn't choose my childhood. My childhood happened to me, right? I didn't choose that. So maybe I was just, this was the thing that I was attracted to. Um, I don't know, but like I began to understand that I like this type of game because my game skills came from that period of time. After I had that period of time with that long-term boyfriend, I don't know if I chose people who were like him or I just kept getting attracted to people that seemed familiar. I'm not sure, but there's a reason why I'm good at this game. And here's the thing, I've changed since that period of time. So I understand the game, but I play the game differently. Does that make sense? I have become almost an entirely different person. My inner core has stayed the same. What I present to the outside has changed um yeah i think it has changed so there's a lot of types of people that are very similar to my first love and my first love was very non-reassuring it was very dangerous it was very sweet though he opened every door for me he wanted to provide everything for me so as much as he was kind of an asshole emotionally, he was sweet in other ways and, and, and showed that he cared in other ways. And he was almost like a weirdly strange mix of like my best friend that I could understand and somebody that I had no idea about anything about. 
So it was like that and, and I I understood that the most. I was most comfortable with that and it didn't scare me. It was a game I wanted to play and it was a game that I sought out. Even though I had no, um, I had no experience with uh, relationships before him and it just evolved and it's like my threshold for um, accepting his behavior because I had nothing to like compare it to. Like it was just, um, I accepted so much because I was like, oh, this is normal, this is normal, this is normal. I didn't know that it wasn't normal and I didn't know that people should treat you differently. And I just, internally, I was beginning to um, build my counterattack to not be as hurt by the actions that I just put up with. Does that make sense? So I began to build the antidote to his poison. It was a poisonous snake and I was beginning to take on the little poisonous bites and I was beginning to um, develop a shell for how to deal with them. And eventually it just became, well, this doesn't really hurt me anymore. I can just deal with it. I had such a threshold for something that was not healthy. There were elements of healthy, right? There was elements of healthy, but there was an underlying thing of not healthy. And, um, but he was intoxicating and I couldn't quit him until, until uh, one day, until one day, he cheated on me so many times, did unspeakable things. And I just thought that this was normal. This was the best that I could get at the time. I didn't have the type of personality uh, outwardly that I do now. And I didn't have the type of uh, self-assurance and like all this, I wasn't, I was not confident. Um, I felt like I needed him. I felt like I, nobody else was attracted to me. Nobody else ever showed interest in me. So therefore, it must be one of one. It, like, this is the only person on the world that was, I thought he was my soulmate. And I was like, God damn it, my soulmate really sucks. He's great in some ways, but he really sucks in others. He sucks for me. He sucks for me. Um, but I was like very convinced that I needed to stick it out because I had a very scarcity mindset, right? So anyways, one day, we were at this uh, golf range and he was hitting golf balls into as far as he could hit or whatever. Golf, he had a bucket of them and um, he was practicing. And for whatever reason, uh, I was like, can I, hold, can I use your phone? Um, this was around the time where, you know, there was first internet on phones. We had little flip phones and uh, I saw a a message pop up that said like something to the effects of like I always think of you when you're not here or something like that and um, I, I knew instantly that that was from a girl that he'd been fucking for a long time or whatever and um, I wasn't supposed to see it but I did see it and this was not the first time that I'd kind of caught him but it was the first time that the lies were um, the eventual explanation that he would give me rang a bell in my brain that this this is completely done. Okay, so what, what, what used to happen was I would catch him doing things and he would tell me an explanation. He would blame the girl. Oh, the girl is so obsessed with me. I couldn't help it. Oh, the girl is just crazy. She like, she's taking things out of context. We're just friends blah 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 so like whatever she says to me that's from her own part I don't feel any of that towards her right we're not together or whatever I would just believe him because I was again thinking I was one of one person this was my person that had to make it work I was going to suffer through whatever was going to happen I didn't know that you could just quit the suffering for my instinctual process I just got good at it <laughs> I just got good at that suffering and I um just got good at being bit by the poisonous snake so and i didn't die i just kind of 
dealt with it. I guess barely alive, but I dealt with it. So I saw that and I remembered every single time that he would kind of tell me some sort of lie. And I would file that away in my little tomb of behaviors and I would wait for a report to happen, a report, a self-report. And I would think about how believable certain things were. What is my fault? What is his fault? Most of the time, as I said, my pattern was to blame myself. And so it was therefore never his fault. It was always my fault. So if it was my fault, I could control some part of it. But if it was his, his fault, then I had to do something different. And I usually wasn't ready to do something different. So, um, sorry, I'm like cracking my ankles. So I read it and he came back and he saw that there was something uh, that had happened. And immediately I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Not this again. Um, cause our, our relationship like lasted for over 10 years and or about 10 years and a, a lot of this had happened. Um, the things that I knew and the things that I didn't know, right? But the things that I knew usually happened about once a year, sometimes more frequently, sometimes less. But anyways, there was a lot of different years to choose from and I just remembered the filing away of all of the different excuses that would come up when certain things that were clearly inappropriate would happen this would happen and I'd heard this excuse before and suddenly everything became very black and white so he immediately resorted to blaming the girl he's like oh she's just obsessed with me I'd heard that probably about two years ago oh she's just obsessed with me and immediately my spell of him was broken I don't know why it took that time and that repeated lie and that, I don't know why, but it just broke my spell. Broke my spell of it, and it was never the same after. Um, I didn't care that I didn't know what to do with myself without him. I didn't care that all I knew was him. And I didn't care that I was going to be alone at this point. I just knew that... I was entering into, you can't undo this territory. So after that point, my brain was just like, the spell is gone. There is no draw for him. And there, all of your lies of you're going to continue this for the rest of your life and just accept this, the, that, that web of a reality was, it, it diminished that day based upon he had told me the same type of lie and suddenly I realized it was him and not them. Does that make sense? It was him and not them. I'm sure it was a little bit of them, but it was him. He was the consistent liar. And I was like, wow. I was so naive, but I was collecting data. I was so naive. And so from there, I have this thing where like, I have a high, high tolerance for crap because I've been, I only started out with the highest version of the unhealthy. Somebody did not treat me healthy for a very long, very long time. And it was during my formative years and it was before I really found myself. And so like part of me still likes that type of personality part of me finds that very fun but i also understand when it's not fun so this is a very long way of saying that that person that day that talked to me that came back the revolving door person that came back he was just like this person in a very long relationship i had a draw to him a magnetic draw to him he played the game like I love to play. It was a dangerous game that most people don't want to play. And it's because they can't handle the fallout. They don't want to handle the fallout. They know immediately that this is dangerous. But to me, I'm like, well, this is very familiar. 
I understand the rules of this. This is not dangerous at all. The only danger that could happen was, you know, other factors other than emotional. I could handle this emotional game because I've already played at higher stakes than this person could ever bring it to. And I'm grown. I have over time basically worked into my personality and, and how I deal with things, how I present myself to people, how like my own wit and how I talk to myself. I don't talk to myself, but you know what I mean? How I interact with my own things. Um, I have basically grown to be the anecdote of this dangerous snake. But for whatever reason, because it's embedded so deep in me, I like this type of person. I find them fascinating. I find them sexy as hell. I find them intoxicating. I find it also not sustainable. Doesn't stop me, but I find it not sustainable. I can't say that with my Invisalign, I'm sorry. I find it not sustainable, but it's good to have little capsule moments of excitement in my life. Boring people that, I'm not looking for troubled people, by the way. I'm not looking for a sad boy to fix. I'm not looking for a person to turn around and kind of help uh, out of a bad spot. I'm not a fixer. I am a person who like, I want somebody to be on the top of their intellectual game and to have this, like, as I've said before, a cat and mouse thing. That's why. It's, like, all because when I was younger, I developed this way of being with this. And um, I just got better and better and better at being bitten by this type of snake. Like, it's almost more fun now. And that seems really messed up to say. But um, I'm sure that there's a lot of unhealthy people on that snake-like kind of personality that I could interact with. And there's some, maybe by some statistical chance, some healthy people that still embody elements of this. And you don't know what you don't know until you kind of like um, experience them. You don't know where they fall on that. So. I think you could say, Michelle, why don't you ch choose differently about the people that you enjoy? Why don't you just kind of like know this and it avoid them? That's easier said than done. They're like my kryptonite. Everybody has their kryptonite. I haven't saturated myself with how it goes badly yet, right? I haven't, I'm like, I'm not done with it yet. Like, in fact, I just get better and better at playing the game with them to make the game more fun, right? It's just like that. It's complicated like that. And my reward system is very ingrained in their input. <sighs> Which is not wonderful, but it's also, I don't know if I want to change it, even if I could change it. I don't think I can currently, and I don't know if I want to. So we're at we're at the part where like I'm aware that this happens. I'm not I'm not at the part where like I've completely done a 180 and I'm like I'm gonna go for good guys that don't play games. That's a lie, and I'm not here to lie. I'm just here to explain this from a perspective of somebody who's understanding their own patterns of things. So anyways, I'm at a point in my time where I've like collected myself enough from dating experiences. Like it doesn't make me insecure to be ghosted anymore. It doesn't make me insecure to go on first dates anymore. It doesn't make me insecure about meeting people. It doesn't make me insecure about a lot of things. And so, I also don't get very excited about people because they just show me um, kind of a person that I don't think is fun to interact with and I'm not sure why. I do try to dig. I try to dig to see if there's elements of fun, even if it's hidden behind a perfectly normal person. 
again, I'm not looking for um, a project. I'm looking for a potential excitement. So, what I find is exciting is usually not exciting to other people. It's just not. And so I think what usually is exciting back for these types of people that I find exciting is that I'm kind of a sophisticated version of the person that likes them. Um, and so that's kind of intoxicating in its own right. Um, so when you combine me and them, I'm almost at my top of my game kind of dealing with the snake people, right? Which seems messed up to say, but that's just kind of facts. Like I, I understand their mindset. I understand I can predict outcomes and I understand their motives. And I understand how to um, manipulate that if I want to. I understand how to play them back right so i don't understand as i've said before i don't understand passive aggressive men and i don't like I, that doesn't appeal to me and i don't understand um super feminine men and i don't understand um not that i don't understand it's that i don't choose to interact with that because it doesn't make me excited for some reason um anything that's like too timid is not my favorite Anything that's like, um, lacks masculine follow through is really not my favorite. It's like a turn off and I'm not sure why. I think there are probably lots of great matches in the world for me that um, exhibit those behaviors. But for whatever reason, I am attracted outwardly to like I seek um, these other ones. So why do I line that all up for you? Because something kind of sort of incredible happened from the comeback kid. So that day that I was like super down in the dumps before I was getting to my gray area, I was very black and white and blamed myself. I was like, oh, I must be ugly, or oh, he didn't like my sex, or oh, blah, blah, blah. I was feeling badly about the rejection of the, the sweet pretty boy that had problems. And um, that day, the comeback kid came back with a vengeance and wanted to... Um, start our game back up the game that i love to play and i was like fucking game on yes this is exactly what i need to get my groove back it was like hi little snake i've been waiting for you <laughs> right um so it was like that and um it was it was like this time is different this time is going to be more honest the game was going to elevate because, because I, because I had understood a little bit more about his pattern and I was going to tell him that I understood more about his pattern and therefore the game would change because it didn't work anymore. The cloak of, of, um, I don't know. I feel like the, the, the snake always has like a way to explain himself very vaguely. And like you don't know what's gonna actually happen. You can predict the outcome, but the snake always has this kind of like, mm, I'm into you and then I'm gonna pull back. I'm into you, but then I'm not gonna explain anything. There's no reassurance. There's no anything. There's no experience to see what he usually does until you had enough experience to see what he usually does. So I'd had experience seeing what he usually does and I learned that he lives in his head a lot. And I learned that he kind of pusses out a lot. And I learned that um, he liked the, the build up a lot. And um, that didn't always equal follow through. And that didn't always equal what his actions were in person. But in his head, how he presented himself to me was like, the best version of him, right? But I was like, mm, I've seen your in-person. It's not the same. There's a disconnect between those two people. And um, let's just kind of 
let's just kind of add truth that I understand what game you're playing and I'm playing it back to you, but I'm throwing it back to you at a different level so that maybe you can level up too. Like maybe you can understand that I'm pretty good at this game. And because I've introduced truth and because I still don't care that you did what you did, I'm going to give you what you desire. And I'm gonna see how you deal with that. So. We had a date lined up, it wasn't a date. We had a, um, a meeting, we'll call it that. A meeting lined up based on his idea. And then he pulled the oldest move that he always pulls. And he's like, oh, I, you know, miscalculated things and like, I can't actually see you. He gave me some stupid excuse. And in that moment, it was just exactly like the moment that I had experienced at the golf course. In that moment, the spell of him was broken. I'd seen this excuse before. I had swallowed it hook, line, and sinker before I had any experience with um, deciding if that was a him thing or like a, an external world thing. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt because I think that you should do that most times, but sometimes you should be a little skeptical and <laughs> your skepticism should be based in reality. And you know, you shouldn't always just assume that people are going to screw you over and you shouldn't always just assume that people have the worst intentions, but sometimes they really do. And anyways, he canceled on me, he wasted my time and this was par for the course with him. And this was, he gave me an excuse that he'd given me before, but months earlier, but I'd already filed that away. And it came back and it was like, ding, ding, ding. It's like the spell is broken now. You were my best match as far as like playing this game that I love to play. And you were my best match with like what we actually liked as far as like, trying to explore with each other. You are my best match for so many things, but you are not my best match because of what I just discovered. You are such a selfish human being. And what I was trying to get from him requires vulnerability and it requires selflessness. Selfishness has nothing to do with the good outcome of what I was trying to get from him. And so at that point in time, all of my desire and wants of him was because I thought he could give me this outcome. And suddenly what he explained to me, his excuse, shattered that thought that he could actually give me that outcome that I wanted. Once I know that they're not gonna give me the outcome that I want, I'm done. But I will follow it to the depths of the end of the earth if I think at that time that it is still possible. If there's like a little hope left, I am still game on. Once I see for a fact and have gathered my evidence in my own way of what I can and will not tolerate, I will not tolerate playing a game with a shitty outcome. That is unjustifiable for me. The danger, even if I know how to play, the danger is not worth that. So it's only worth it for the best outcome possible. And so, once he explained to me this really low, emotionally intelligent explanation. And then he bantered back with me in an even stupider way. Um, once he kind of said that, I was free of his particular spell. Doesn't mean I'm not attracted to him. Doesn't mean I still kind of don't want to like, you know, mess with him a little bit. But like the hold that it had on me, I had FOMO of not being able to follow this down and, and, and to follow it to like a good enough conclusion where I could make some decisions. Okay, so I don't know if you could see, but I just charged my battery for a little bit and I saw that my better than sex waterproof mascara had like made like raccoon eyes underneath. So sorry if you had to look at that the whole time, but I feel like I just can't record this again. So I'm super sorry. I don't know how long that actually was there. Um, during my monologue, <laughs> but I wanted to reiterate that there are different parts of 
my personality that will let me kind of break my delusion. So I have this, I, I tend to find what I seek and I seek things that are exciting to me. And it like things become no longer exciting to me once I've decided that um, I'm not gonna get the best outcome that I thought. So that's what happened with me and my boyfriend at the time when I like discovered that it was him and you know not the world, it was him. I decided that the best outcome was no longer a possibility. The best outcome was I was on track to like marry this person, and I would just thought that I was with my soulmate, and I thought that I was in love, and I thought that he loved me, but he just kind of I don't know why he just was led astray so many times but whatever i just always felt like i could eat up the lies until i realized that it was him it was him that was the problem as far as being in the relationship with me it was him it was not the world it was him the fulfilling life of being with my soulmate not my soulmate all of that delusion faded very quickly, shattered immediately. And that's usually how things happen. Things don't happen slow for me, they happen like that. I gather the evidence until like I'm ready to see it. I'm ready to read my report that I've concocted in my head. I'll notice everything and I'll file away everything. And then I'll notice the contradictions. And if the contradiction still points towards I'm going to get what I want out of it, I'll ignore it. Other people <clears throat> will see the contradictions as a red flag and continue on. Or they will stop just because it's a contradiction. That's not the case for me. Because that contradiction in itself, a contradiction in somebody's personality itself is not scary to me. In fact, that's almost nice for me because I see how, you know, they truly are or I see them progressing or there could be a lot of different reasons for a contradiction. A contradiction to me is not inherently a red flag, but when it's a contradiction that is explaining why someone would be cheating uh, or explaining away something stupid and the contradiction is, is, is there, that's something that's like even I shatters my dream, it shatters my delusion, it shatters my idea of the possibility. I don't even want to follow the possibility down anymore because I, I've collected enough evidence that says I'm not de defiantly, I'm not going to get what I want from this person. That's what happened with me yesterday actually. He gave me an excuse, but he'd already given me that excuse and it shattered my idea of what I could possibly get from him. It was very reminiscent of that. And it was kind of funny because I remember that boyfriend, that boyfriend that I had that um, the whole thing shattered when we, uh, I saw that message on his phone while we were playing, he was playing golf. He had broken up with me on 6 7 8, June 7th, 2008. So like 16 years ago to yesterday, I had remembered that that certain thing in my life had happened. I went back with him after he came back from his trip, after he like came up to my like work and he like broke up with me. And then um, he like left. I didn't know that he was going to do that. I didn't know he was going on a trip. I didn't know anything about that. So that's kind of like, you know, one of those indicators of how lovely it was working then. But at that time I was devastated. I was like, hmm, you did that while I was at work. And then you did that on a day that was easy to remember, 6 7 8. So yesterday was 6 7 2024, 16 years later. And I get another one of those little breadcrumbs from the world that was like, here is, I wasn't even thinking about that when I would, like, when my idea of this new person, the new snake, was, um, telling me his excuse but I was transported back to that moment of time where like my idea of what was happening in a relationship was shattered. And suddenly I realized that, interesting, 6-7-2024.
So anyways, I don't know what that all means, but probably means nothing. And also, in conclusion, just because I know these things about myself does not mean that I actually feel like changing them. Um, and it doesn't mean that I necessarily think that they're healthy or not healthy. It's just the way it is right now. And I don't have experience with enough other types of personality traits because I, as I said, I tend to find what I seek and people try to seek me back. Um, I did have a little bit of experience with like a different type of personality and it kind of ended the same, right? It kind of ended the same, but it felt like a different bad game. The pretty boy with the, the problems. I think I was picking up my camera and I was like, oh, I should mention this one last thing. I do have the ability to take enjoyment and um, satisfaction from a small interaction. It doesn't always have to be the longest term, most committed thing for me to make uh, a positive experience from it. So what I'm trying to say is the date with the 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 wolf in sheep's clothing boy was enjoyable until it wasn't but i still gained satisfaction from going on that and like going on the date um the process of playing the game with this person that was playing at a high level that was fucking enjoyable for me and i'm able to kind of take away good parts about that and so i live in terms of I'm hoping for more of a, a long-term meaningful thing, but during this time, like my reward system still rewards me for these things that don't always have a positive outcome at the end end, but like I enjoy the process during it. So it's, it's like that for me. It's not only enjoyable if it works out forever. It's not like that. And I don't know if that's different from you but that's how it is for me. So I thought that I should mention that as an additive, like it's still enjoyable. So that's kind of explaining how I could still want to do it, like how I want to do it. It does produce some sort of thing that I do like. So in conclusion, does this mean that I'm gonna change my entire strategy? Well, probably not. I like what I like and I can't unlike that overnight, just like, my idea of people can shatter, but I still have this delusional hope that I will find the type of person that likes to play back with me and has the type, the type of personality that I like because that is embedded. What is not embedded is like the wanting to continue with the same person. I do have a stop loss and it's built in. As I said, I've like developed the antidote for this type of personality. And um, I do think that I'm attracted to that for ways that I can't even under like understand or explain and things that I've explained to you. So easier said than done of being like, well, just go for a good guy or well, just go for somebody who treats you like a best friend or like go, go for somebody safe. That doesn't seem safe to me. That seems like I don't know how to play that game and um maybe i don't want to play maybe it's boring and maybe it's boring for a reason that i don't know yet and maybe it can become unboring maybe that can become exciting right but i'm not there yet and honestly i don't know if i want to be there um so that's why i say my stuff that i say to you is not advice I've never said ever that the things that I am doing or want to do or have the desire to do in the future are healthy for somebody else. I don't even know if they're healthy for me, but I do have a good grasp on what's going on when it is going on. And I don't really fall into a deep depression about the comings and goings of these people. Like it's just kind of an experience for me and I don't know if people can really wrap their head around it quite like that. Um, if you deal with this type of person, right? Or, you know, if you meet your equivalent, whatever poison that you have, I don't know if your best match is the opposite version of that. I don't know if your best match is to find a healthy version of the poisonous snake. I really don't know. 
and I'm not pretending to tell you what to do because I'm not even trying to like alter my behavior I'm just trying to understand my behavior and be aware of it like once I'm aware um and I'm trying really hard to always be aware it's not like yeah okay I do I do I do have to say there is a point in time where the outcome is more important than the person does that make sense I wanted really great sex with this snake person and I didn't care how he presented himself during the getting to know you part. I didn't care. Because I was convinced that this type of person would give me that great outcome because I've always been wanting that great outcome. And um, I was super excited about him physically. Um, he like just did it for me. And that was what I was into with him. So I ignored a lot of things because it didn't matter to me. Because the outcome I thought was still achievable. When I'm ready to break the delusion, I will use the tools that I have gathered to the antidote basically, and I will push back. I used to not do that. I used to let my boyfriend kind of like tell me all these lies and then never challenge him. I was just accepting. I was too accepting of everything. I was a people pleaser. I was all these things that just kind of kept it going. I'm not like that anymore. So that's what I tried to tell you that I am the anecdote for this type of personality. I am the inverse of what this type of person does. I know how to stop it. I know how to, like it's still kind of like a puzzle piece, a puzzle game, because each individual that has this type of thing, um, you know, ha comes with their own kind of quirks. And so, you know, it's not like I can just immediately stop it or know how, but I, I, I am aware that at any point in time, I know how to There's a thing that I like to bring up in movies. It's the willful suspense of disbelief. You're watching a movie and you know that it's fake, but you're still watching it anyways, knowing that the storyline is made up. The, the willful suspense of disbelief is you're suspending your belief that this isn't real. So I have a willful suspense of disbelief when it comes to dealing with these people. Like, at any point in time, I can just understand that the, this is, um, I can stop it. I can, I can come back to my senses a little bit, even though I've been, I've, I'm carried away fully. I'm fully immersed in whatever end game that I think I can get with this type of person. It's hard to, like, it's bad to explain it like that, but it's the easiest for you to understand what I'm kind of trying to say. So, I now have acquired the skills in order to shut them down a little bit, to challenge them. At any point in time, I could challenge their, their stupidity or I can challenge their um, contradictions or I can challenge their stuff. But when I have an idea, like I could see something that I should challenge and I can ignore it or I can challenge it. I can stop the inertia of things or I can let it continue as is with the, the dynamic that we have. If I show that I'm a challenging person in their whatever they're trying to present, they're going to pull back or they're going to do something different. So I'm just, I'm just letting them behave as they behave and I'm just letting them do their thing. I've held back that I can challenge them. But when I see the possible evidence that my end game is shattering, I will fully show my cards that I can block their shit and I can challenge them and push back because I know how and because I'm comfortable doing that now. I'm not scared to confront people and I'm not scared to create awkward, uncomfortable truth moments. I'm not scared to do that because I see, I see exactly what's going on and then I'll tell them I'll see exactly what's going on. And then I'll, I'll see what they say to me. Sometimes they push back. Sometimes they double down. Sometimes they double down on their 
the behavior that got them into the part where I needed to challenge them. And sometimes they um, accept defeat and they're like, hmm, well played, right? Sometimes they do that. So it's like a little chess match. So that's what dating is like for me, but that's how thinking is like for me. And like I said, I don't really know what to do from here because, but I also don't feel like there's there's any real push to change right now. It's just like, I'm still tr attracted to what I'm attracted to. I can't change that currently right now. And I don't know if I want to, as I said, but I do realize that, um, I do realize that I have the power to. Does that make sense? So it's not scary. It's just interesting and kind of sad that I have this pattern that I didn't choose or that I did choose to lean into. And it's just that this is the way it is for me. Um, and I have to learn how to deal with that with other people. So thank you for listening. And I hope that this was interesting and I will see you guys in my next video. Take care.